In this video, we are going to create AI Travel Planner. We have this awesome looking landing page and in order to create our plan, we need to be logged in. So we are using Clerk here for authentication and we can log in now and we are going to our form to create our travel plan. When we fill out our form and click Submit, OpenAI is creating us a travel plan and we are saving it to our database using Drizzle ORM and we are being redirected to our plan page where we are displaying our whole plan for this trip. And finally, we have my plans page where we can see all the plans that we have created and we can return back to any of those plans and check them out. As always, you have all this code in a public GitHub repository and it's in the description below. And while you are there, click one like on this video so I know that my tutorials are actually useful to anyone. First thing as always, we are creating a new Next.js application. So I'm running create next app latest inside of my projects directory and I'm proceeding with 14.2.14. That's the current version of Next.js and I'm going to name my project AI Travel Planner like this. And I'm going to use TypeScript, ESLint, Tailwind CSS, basically all the defaults of Next.js. And now our Next.js application is being installed. So that one is finished. We can clear everything, go to our AI travel planner, this one, and we are going to run it with PM, PM dev. So now when we refresh here on our localhost 3000, we are going to see the default page from Next.js. And now next thing that we are going to do is to initialize ShedCN UI. So we are going to ShedCN documentation inside the get started, then installation, Next.js, and here we have the npx ShedCN latest init command. So I'm going to run that one. We are going to our projects AI travel planner, and I'm running the npx ShedCN latest init. We're going to use New York style and slate color. And yes, we're going to use CSS variables. And there it is. That one is installed. And now when we have Next.js and ShedCN, we can start creating our web pages. So first thing that we are going to create is our landing page. So for that, we are going to use a Sternity UI library. And that one is basically the fancy Shed CN library where you have a bunch of really awesome looking components and we are going to use, I think it's called globe, something like that. Yeah, this one. So we are going to use GitHub globe for our main landing page. This one is travel AI planner. So this is something logical that I think people would like to see the world on the landing page and we need to install some dependencies. So here we need to install basically Framer Motion. I think we already have CLS, CLSX and Tailwind Merge from ShedCN, but let's try to install all three to see what is going to be installed. And now we are going to see that, yes, we had a bunch of things here. And now next thing is to install these dependencies from 3.js. So this one is working with 3.js under the hood and we are going to install all of those also. So these here are needed for every Asternet UI components and this is only for the globe component dependencies. And that one should be installed. Yes, there it is. And now this one we already have with ShedCN inside the libutils and we can just copy the entire globe.tsx component. So we copy the entire component and here inside of our code, we are going to create a new directory called components. And inside we should have UI directory. Everything goes there by default by ShedCN and we are going to create a new globe.tsx file. And there I'm pasting everything that I copied from Asternity UI. So now we can see here all the props for this globe component. And if we tried to fill them out, 
by ourselves, it will probably take us a lot of time. So we're going to click here inside the code for this example, and we are going to use exactly the same thing. So I'm copying this entire code from a student UI documentation, and I'm going to open our main page, and I'm just going to paste it in, all of it. And now let's see here, it's complaining, it's not in the right, it should be in the components like this. And what else do we have here? Here we have some error also. Oh, now it's good. It was probably something with the components also. And now it should probably work. Let's try it out. So let's just see how is this page called and if it uses, let's see if it's going to work. So here I'm refreshing the screen and we have a problem with data globe dot json do we have that one we don't have it probably we need to copy it somewhere here that json file and oh we have to download this globe json file okay i'm downloading it basically i'm copy pasting and let's see where is it being so we need to create data folder and inside i'm going to create globe.json and I'm going to paste the entire thing. And now I'm going to close this one and refreshing the screen and it's complaining. We need to restart our Next.js application so everything can be rendered without a problem. And let's see if we have any more errors now or if it is clear, we need default on the export of our not here here exports this one so it needs to be default function globe and now we need to add default on our page here so yeah this one export default function and we are going to call it page and now do we have it yes so here it is it's not really looking wonderful in light mode, so we are probably going to turn it to dark mode only, but it works and yeah, it's just fine. We don't have any scroll and I can drag and, and drop, like drag this globe left and right. So now we can just turn it to dark mode and then continue on our second page. So for dark mode, we have the easiest hack and that's here on the HTML to put class name dark and we're going to get dark mode. And this one looks ugly, let's refresh. Okay, now it's better, but we have this hole below that's probably somewhere on the page. Where is the HTML? Here it is. So we have height screen. Yeah, it should be height screen always. Let's see how does it look now. And now, yeah, so now it looks great. We just need to change this text and we can move on. So we sell soap. We are going to say there AI travel planner. And this one we are going to let AI do its thing. So with this planner, you can plan your next trip to any country in the world. You can also put nice. I don't know what he said, but I think that's good. And oh, we can remove like the this part. It was repeating itself. OK, so now let's refresh AI travel planner. With this planner, you can plan your next trip to any country in the world. Awesome. And we just need a small button. So for the button, we need to install the button component so we're going to do it with this command and we are going to install basically all the components with this command so adding the button here it is and that one is done so now we can put here button components ui button and there we can go to plan my next trip and it's going to be a link, next link, this one to our next page that we are going to create. And that's going to be plan is maybe travel plan like this travel planner. Nice. 
and let's see how does it look if it looks good enough it's not good so let's try putting here for example flex flex column justify center item center and gap and now it looks much better but this button is behind the globe and let's see why so because this entire headings paragraph and button is inside this div let's move it out from here so here i'm going to create a new div and put it inside so now i'm going to move all these classes inside of this div and let's see how does it look now now we need here column instead of row and it should be good yeah now it's great we just need to separate it a little bit less so this padding it's probably let's see where it is i think it's this one the minus 20 bottom and let's try it out now so when i refresh nice now it's looking great it's working the button is working and if we make it smaller it's looking nice even on the mobile devices so this one is looking great awesome so now next thing that we need to do is this travel planner page and for this one we are going to use clerk because in order to create your meal plan you should be logged in inside this application now we can create quickly a new page and that's in the app directory we are creating new folder called travel planner and inside we are creating new page.tsx so there we are exporting default function travel planner yes we are going to call it page because we are probably going to create travel planner component in future and now here we see that we have this new page but we need to access this only if we are currently logged in so we are going to clerk next.js and we are going to search it in google and we are going to next.js quick start with clerk so this one is extremely easy to install and this is probably the fastest authentication that you can get for next.js so i'm copying the clerk adding dependency here pm pm add clerk next.js that one is added we need to set our environment variables this one is automatically copied from my uh, logged in account so i created my publishable key and secret key and when i copy this it's going to be automatically already inside of my environment file so here when i create new file first we are going to create environment example like this so now here we need these two so this one and this one we are going to leave it like this and then new dot env dot local and there i'm going to copy paste these keys from my project this is orkish admin i can use that one you just need to create a new project on clerk and then use those credentials for your project so i copied the credentials and i'm going to paste them inside of my env.local you're not going to see it so you don't see my api keys and you always have to keep your api keys secret so don't share them don't show them on youtube videos etc so i copied my credentials inside the environment file and now we can continue with our documentation so we need to create a middleware we are creating this one inside of our root so here we are creating middleware.ts and i'm pasting the entire thing from clerk documentation and then we need to add our clerk provider inside of our layout so here it is we need to do this exact thing inside of our layout so before our html i'm going to layout here here we are putting the clerk provider and i'm wrapping everything up and i'm just going to call it from clerk slash nextjs like this and now next thing is to put these signed out signed in buttons and we are going to move this one inside the header components so i'm going to create header.tsx and here i'm going to use 
react snippets and we are just going to copy paste the entire thing we just need to import all these buttons and things from clerk so this one is simple you probably already see it in case that you are signed out you are going to see sign in, sign in button and in case you're signed in you're going to see user button and this one is quite simple it works really great and now inside of our layout we are going to put here our header from the ui components where it is i cannot see it did i export it yes i'm just going to name it like this header and now let's go one more time header here it is and let's now go to our next app and we can see here that i'm already logged in that's because i'm logged in inside of my orkish admin so if we go here to our landing page we can see it's still here we are just going to style this heading a little bit so it goes in the right corner so let's just style it up a little bit we are going to our header and here we are going to class name come on cursor now help us flex justify and p4 awesome i think that's everything we need yes here it is let's refresh to see if this globe is normal or not it's good okay and we have this scroll we just don't want that one we want it to be absolute like this and now let's refresh again and do we have our scroll nope nice so this one is now working and next thing that we need to do is just to add to middleware that we don't want our route to be accessed without the authentication so here as you can see we need to add just something like this so let's see our middleware i'm going to close everything and here it is so here we have exactly the same like here but we need this protected route so we are going to add this constant is protected route and we need to import the create route matcher and here we are going to put yes cursor is now giving us travel planner and that is the thing we need and now we just need a function and it's somewhere here yeah this one so we need clerk middleware to tell us that if this route is protected we are going to do this out protect and it's not going to work so let's try it out if that one is working so we are going to plan my next trip and it's working awesome but now if we return back and if i log out and now if we go to plan my next trip then we are getting our sign in page so this one is working now when i sign in i'm going automatically to our travel planner nice so authentication is working now we can just add quickly custom sign in and sign up pages and then we are ready to continue so here it is create custom sign in and sign up and that one is extremely easy so here we need to add these so in app we are creating sign up page so here i'm creating a new sign up and inside i'm creating a new folder again like this sign up and there i'm creating page.tsx and copying this entire thing like this and then same thing for the sign in so we are just going to copy this one so creating inside the app new folder sign in and then inside new folder again and then like this and whoops so i need to close the brackets and then here page.tsx copying the entire thing i'm just not sure if here we should have a dash yes so let's add everything by the book so here adding that dash and here also nice so now if we go to our 
sign in page. I'm going to sign out. And if we go to sign in, we are still not going to the... Uh, oh, yes, I know because we need the this one. So we need this one in our environment file. I'm now going to copy paste it. You're not going to see it again, but I'm going to put it inside the example first. So we need this inside of our environment file. I copied it and now if we go here and if we go back to our local host, come on, local host 3000, here it is. And if we go plan my next trip, we have our custom sign in page. We just need to center it and we are going to this one sign in. We are just going to create a new div and I think it should be like this. Let's see. Awesome. That's it. We're just going to do the same thing for the sign up page. Like this. Div. And here we need this bracket. And now if we go to the sign up. It's working also. Awesome. So now we have our custom sign in and sign up pages and we just need to turn them to be always in dark mode because we are using dark mode by default and that one is also easy we go here we go to the appearance and we put our base theme to be dark and this dark needs to be imported from the clerk but i think we need the clerk team so clerk dark team this one it just we just need to search it on google and let's install this dependency and where is it the dark team this one so we are adding clerk teams and now we just need to import it from the clerk teams and come on i'm going to reload the window and now we're going to the dark and here it is so now we're going to do the same thing for the sign in page like this and importing dark team and if we go to our app and go to sign in we have our dark mode sign in and we can log in normally and go to our plan next trip page awesome so now we are going to build our form here so how i planned this one is to have here one calendar for start date one calendar for end date then we have here our budget then activities input and finally we can put in the wanted country but we don't need to do it we can let the ai decide what it needs to do so let's start so we need our calendar component here so i'm adding calendar we need input and we need Let's put in text area. We're probably going to use that one also. And we need our form. So form component is going to install Zod and everything that is needed for our forms. So let's install these. And yes, we're going to rewrite the button. So that one is installed now. So now we can start building it. I'm going to shed CN and I'm searching for forms. Here it is. And we are going to start with simple form. So we are adding all of these. So we are going to add use client and import Zod and form scheme and everything. For that, we are going to create a new component. So here I'm going to create a new directory called features. So here we are going to separate everything that is not a shared component. And I'm going to create a new file and call it, for example, travel what's our page called it's the travel planner so travel planner form .tsx. so here i'm creating a new component this one is going to be called travel planner form and we are going to copy and paste all these things from shed cn that are used for our forms 
so then we need our Zord resolver and use form we are going to copy paste it inside and we need all of these inside of our component so here we are adding our form and our on submit function that is going to happen when we submit our forms then we are adding our input and our button and all of our form components so we are importing all of that inside of our form and now we are just copy pasting this entire form to render it out instead of this div like this and now we don't have any more nothing is complaining from the cursor and we are calling on submit where when we handle our submit on our form and when we click our submit button so let's see how does how is this one looking now so here oh i didn't import it so we're going to our page travel planner and here we're going to put in our travel planner form this one so let's see how does it look and refreshing our screen and here we have our simple form that is just an input and with submit button so this one is working now with this input we just need to put calendars so we need two calendars one for starting date and one for end date let's first just style this one up so we don't have our form on top of our page so here i'm going to put this one to be a main element like this and we're going to put here some class name like this and let's see yeah now it's on the middle of the screen and it looks good so now we can start using our calendar let's see here how is it used so i think it's used with the uh, pop-up component so something like this yes so we need exactly the same thing so let's see how is this one used it's using the popover yes not the pop-up so i'm adding that component also the popover this one and is it using something else no it's just the form it's using the toast but we can add that one later and that's it so we can copy this entire thing so i'm taking this form field from the calendar documentation and i'm going to put it instead of our input here so it's this one and we need to add our calendar from our components we need to add our popover it's not yet loaded so i'm going to reload my window and put here the popover now it should be ready yes here it is from the ui directory popover the popover trigger also then we need our calendar icon from radix ui then we have our popover content again from ui slash popover and here we have something happening with our form so we need to change this one to start date and that's inside of our schema so i'm going to move it down so we can see it better here before the component and we are going to say start date and that one is going to be a date also end date let's put it like this and here we are putting start date and end date to by default they are going to be today so new date and here we are going to put start date for our form field so now we yes we also need to import this cn and we have format here which is using i think date fns from shed cn if i'm correct format yes so we need to add also pmpm add date fns it's really an awesome library much better than what's it called time zone something like that the no the moment js 
and it's much more lightweight than Moment.js. And now I think we have everything. So we are adding format from date FNS and no more complaints. Checking here, something red, only the input that is not used, but we are going to use it later. So let's try it out. So now here we have our pop-up, which is working and we can choose our date, except we cannot choose future dates, only the past dates. That one needs to be the other way around. So we are going to our calendar and here we need to change it to be less than new date. Then it needs to be disabled and it needs to be bigger than this one. So now if I refresh, we, oh, I did something wrong. It just, oh, it updated it automatically. Okay. So it's disabled if it's just less than today. Yes. So now we can choose tomorrow and everything after tomorrow and nothing in the past. And we are going to do the same thing for the end date. So now let's see where are we creating this here. I'm going to create a new div and I'm going to put this form field inside and I'm going to create exactly the same form field, except this time it's going to be for the end date. And here we're going to put flex and not flex column, just flex and gap of four. So we're going to put both form fields one next to each other. And instead of date of birth, it should be start date and pick a date. This everything looks fine. And here it should be end date. And let's see how does it look. So going here and here it is. Now we have this one and this one and it looks nice. So now here we need to change this description, form description. Yes. So this one needs to be better explained. So come on, AI, give me something. Your end date is used to calculate your age. Nope. So the end date is used is going to be the day you return from your trip. Yes. And now here, the start date is going to be the date you leave for your trip. Nice. And it just needs to be a little bit shorter. So we can just say this, the date you leave for your trip and here the date you return from your trip. Nice. So now this one is looking great. Now we just need to make little bit of logic. So for example, if we choose here 9th of October, we shouldn't be able to choose here anything before 10th of October. So let's make that logic first. So we are going to this end date calendar here, and we need to add additional logic. So this needs to be, or if form, get values and then start date. So if this date is less than start date, then it cannot be chosen. So let's see if this one is working actually. So I'm going to refresh the screen here. I'm choosing 16th of October and here I cannot choose anything. I mean, I can choose 16th, but it's probably because of the seconds. So we need to put here that it needs to be one day after this date. So we need to go to date FNS documentation and there we need to add days. It's something add days. Yes, this one. So we need to use add days and it should be easy. Yes. So we just need to call add days, put in our dates and put the amount of days we need to calculate. So here we are going to put add days from date FNS and we are going to add just one day and this one should work. Let's try it out. So here now when I refresh and we choose October 15th, 
Here, next date that we can choose is October 16th. Excellent. Only thing left for better UX is that when we choose our start date, automatically we are choosing our end date to the next day. So we are going to do that easily here on our on select. Where is that one? Here on select. We are going to turn this into a function like this. And yes, so AI did all the job. So we are setting our value for end date to our current date that we are choosing from here. But we just need to put it also to add days to add one day and what is it complaining now argument of date undefined is not assignable to date argument okay so if not this one then we are just going to put new date but i'm not sure why is this one happening because we have our date here but all right and just one more thing here for our selected we are going to say also if this one exists. So if we have our form get values start date, then we are going to put this one to be a value. And if not, we are going to put the normal field value. So let's see how does it work now. So here, when I click 16, it's giving us automatically October 17th and here we have it already marked and this one is now I think working great yes so let's see if I choose this one it's November the 1st awesome and yeah here it's also not changing the the month so we need to do that one also we have a prop on the calendar called default month. Yes, this one. And we're not going to put start date. We're going to put end date. So let's try it out now. So now if I refresh and we choose October the 31st, we're getting November the 1st. And our default month is November. And now we can choose whatever we want. So everything is now, I think, working. 8th of October. Then we are choosing anything we want. Awesome. So this one is working great. So now we are going to put our budget and our activities. And for that, I'm going to put here budget. And that one is going to be a number. Minimum can be zero. And for our activities, it's going to be, yes, it can be an array of strings and we need to have minimum of one. And in the end, we are going to have destination. And that one is going to be optional because we can let AI decide where is he going to take us. So now we need our budget. And for that, we are going to create here again, new div and inside, let's follow this cursor. Uh, yes, it's giving us good things, except this one is going to be budget. And inside of this input, we're going to turn it to number input like this. And here we are going to say budget. And we can put also description, the total amount of money you want to spend on your trip. Okay, so this is our budget now. And it can be like this so we're going to put flex and gap four and just next to our budget we're going to put our activities so for activities we are going to add the command component and we are going to add some activities just in some data file so here we're going to the command this one and let's see what do we have we need that search is it combo box this one or something like this but with the search yes so we need this combo box awesome so here we're going to check what are we using so we need command popover that one we already have so we need only command component and i'm going to add that one so adding command 
and we are going to copy this entire thing and put it inside of our form so going here inside of our imports i'm putting it here from the command com component importing it and we can move a little bit these things up to separate all the imports and the components should be here and all other st stuff above nice and also this one i don't know why is it imported like this we are going to import it like this and this one also like this and now it should be good okay so now let's see how is everything else used so here we are going to copy our frameworks in our case that's going to be activities so we are going to put it here we are later going to separate it to some other file and here we are going to create two states and we are going to import use state from react like this nice and now we are going to add that popover do we have here maybe some form yes so we have form example so here we need to check now form field this one and we are adding this whole thing and copy pasting it below here nice so now we need here our icons so chevrons up and down that's coming i think from lucid and this one is going to be frameworks in our example and it's not language but framework like this and this one also and here nice and now let's import those icons it's again not working let's reload one more time and now come on it just doesn't want to listen to me okay let's go through here to add from lucid react our icons like this and let's see what else do we have this one shouldn't be language but activities and this one also should be a framework set activities and this one also framework like this okay let's see if this one is working now currently we are saving it as only one selection but what we need to do is to add an array of all of these so now it's working we just cannot select it because it's using only one so we need multi-selection here so on each select if we check here on select we are going to create a new state that is going to be called activities so here we are going to see it's like the ai heard me so we are creating activities uh, state i'm not sure for this open and value set value for what thing is it used so i'm deleting that one so we have our activities and by default it's going to be an empty array so now if we go to our activities here and on select here we need to put that if activities includes framework.value we are setting our activities to add that particular activity so we just need to rename it now from frameworks to activities so i'm going to rename this one activities like this and food let's just allow this ai to give us something transportation that's really not an activity we can say here 
nature and what is transportation as an activity and accommodation is not really activity we can put hiking and here culture that one is good and let's add history and art nice i think that's enough and now when we go to frameworks we can replace all the frameworks with activities and all framework should be an activity like this so let's see if that one is working i'm refreshing the screen selecting activity no language found where is that one language here it is so we are missing the labels from this one and okay so this one should be our default activities here let's see why is this one complaining oh because we are putting this one should be array of strings and we are putting it like an array of objects with value and label so what sh we should do we are going to put here currently selected activities like this and set currently selected activities by default it's going to be an empty array and we are going to rename this one in activities like this so now we should go here inside of our form field let's change it here to activities and we should check if our field value so here if it contains the currently selected activity so we can basically say here activities because we can choose multiple activities and if we have three activities we cannot display it normally inside here so we are just going to say let's say select activities selected activities like this and here now let's see what is happening so we are going through all of our activities and we are checking if our activities includes the activity dot value so we want to check if our currently selected activities includes that value in that case we are going to set our activities to activity if it's not equal to the value so we need to change this one to currently selected activities again and we need to set the currently selected activities so this one is good so this is only the case if it includes already this value and if not we need to set currently selected activities to the old currently selected activities plus this activity and is it label or value let's see what is with yeah we can put i mean it doesn't matter this one is going to the ai so we can do the label or value it's totally the same i think for for open ai and here we are still complaining with activity dot value so it should be the property value does not exist on type string so this one is the activity but we should have the activity here for oh because we are naming it here the same so this activity we can put it to be a like this and here also a and now this one should work yes and here we are setting the value of activities to our activity dot value and that one should be our currently selected activities because this one is the array of strings like you can see here and i think on select we are doing the right thing except here we need to put that currently selected activities includes this label and ai is giving us the good thing this time so now we should be able to choose multiple activities let's try it out i'm refreshing here the screen and i'm choosing hiking now i'm choosing culture and awesome i think it's working so let's try it out 
I'm going to put some budget here and submit. Let's see the console log, what is actually going here. We're going to check that one later. This one ex expected to be a number and received string. So we should put it to be a number always. And that one is in our budget. So it's here and we need to tell that on change here we are setting it as a number so field on change is putting it like this as a number let's try it out now again so i'm submitting now it's working awesome so what we have here for our activities nice so we have hiking and culture and oh we don't have art that's interesting so let's try oh we cannot remove okay so that one is not working Let's go now again to activities here and let's see what's going on. So here, oh, I know what it is. So we are setting it as label. We should put both of these to be labeled. So we need to check if currently selected activities has this label. And if it has, we need to remove it. So now it should work. Let's refresh. We are going to nature, history. Now we should deselect nature, yes. Is deselected okay so let's see now the first problem when I select hiking in nature and I put some budget we have here some error and submit now we should have two activities okay so we are late for one activity to be saved let's see where is that happening so here we are setting our currently selected activities and based on that we are setting our form values. So here it's probably late from some reason because this one is happening before. So what we can do is here we can move our set values and we can do exactly the same thing for our set values for our form. And here also we can just set it like this. And now it should probably work so what are we missing here? We're missing this bracket. Okay, and let's try it out now. So now if we refresh and we add our budget and we select hiking in nature and submit, now we are getting, yes. So now we are getting two activities and if we deselect hiking, for example, and we submit, we are getting again two. So we need to do the same thing here. So not currently selected activities, but this one like this. And now let's again test it out. So selecting hiking in nature, submitting, and we have two activities. I'm removing hiking, submitting again, and now we have one activity. So this one is now working. Let's move it below. It's ugly as hell like this. So I'm going to remove this div. And where is the beginning? Here. So let's see. Yes, now it is much better. And what is left is to add the country country input and oh yeah this text also this is the language this is the language that one is not good so these are the activities you want to do on your trip now we have a better description and we can just put the desired country here next to our activities so now we are going to create again a new div and that one is going to be flex, not flex column. And we are going to end the div here. And here we're going to add the new form field. And that one is going to be for our destination. And let's see how is that one looking. Why is it not refreshed? Okay, it's again ugly. So I'm <laughs> removing this div and we are going to put it below like this awesome and this one is optional so we don't need to put this destination so we are going to say somewhere optional and for budget we need to put some placeholder 
enter your budget and also for the destination we're going to say placeholder enter your destination and in the form label we're going to say optional like this and now it should everything should work so let's try it out I'm putting the 9th of October to 15th of October. My budget can be, for example, $4,200. And let's see what is component is changing and uncontrolled input to be controlled. Okay, we are going to solve this one. So now my activities, I'm going to choose hiking and food. And for my destination, I'm just going to put Germany, for example. And now when I submit, we are getting here 15th of October for our end date. That one is good. Our start date is the 9th of October. That one is also good. Destination Germany, budget 4,200 and activities, hiking and food. So our form is ready for AI to create our travel plans. So what should happen now is when we submit this form, we should talk to AI and send all this data and create some kind of prompt that is going to return us our travel plans. And when that one is returned, we should parse all of that data, save it to some database and then redirect to next page, which is going to be something like, I don't know, maybe plan and then some ID. And after that, we should see that plan in like details day one day two day three so we have here from 9th of october to 15th so we should have six days plan from the ai created and everything displayed on our new page so let's start first i'm going to create a new directory here and i'm going to close everything that we have opened and here I'm creating new directory called server. So here we are going to store all of our server actions. And inside I'm creating ai.ts. And this one we are going to use for our travel creation mutation. So I'm creating here, adding use server as a prefix. And we are going to export, yes, something like this. So generate trip plan and we are receiving our form data from our, what's it called? Travel form, something like that. Travel planner form. Yeah, that one. So for this type, we're going to use from this form, our schema. And that one is this form schema here. So I'm going to cut that one out and here I'm going to create a new file called schemas.ts and there I'm going to export this form schema like this and importing Zod. So now we can actually here form schema, we can import it from our schema schemas file like this. And we're going to put exactly the same thing inside of our AI file. So this type is going to be exactly the same type as in our travel planner form component like this. And now here we can, oh, it's already giving us exactly what we need. So we are getting our response from the OpenAI API and here is our response role user that one is good content is not going to be form data we need to create our own prompt and we need to add OpenAI API key so I'm going to the example file here and I'm adding here OpenAI API key I'm going to add it of course to my environment file also and now here we need to create our prompt. So here, oh, we need to also import Zod, this one. So let's now get all of our form values like this. And 
we are going to create a prompt where let's try to use this AI. So I'm planning a trip to destination from start date to end date with a budget of budget. And I want to do the following activities. And here we are just joining all the activities with a comma. So this one is a good start. It's only thing is that destination is optional. So we need to say if destination is optional, it needs to be the other way. So if we don't have destination, we just need to say I'm planning a trip from to and here if destination, we just need to add I want to go to destination. And that's only if that one is th this one should be let not const because we are changing it here. And what is it complaining now? Assigned but never used. Okay. So only if we have destination, we are adding it to our prompt. And then here we are just using our prompt for the content. And this one should now work. So now we just need to await for response JSON and just return our data and to see what are we going to get. So I added the API key and here I'm going to console log our data to see what are we getting. So now here in our on submit right here, we are going to make that mutation. So we are going to call this await generate trip plan and we are going to send our values. So we are importing it from the server AI. We are again going to move all of these things above and react should be first here like this. Okay. So this one now looks fine. And here we are just calling it. So let's try it out. Now here, I'm going to choose 8th of October to 10th of October. Budget is 200, 2,200. Oh, we didn't put actually if it's like dollars, euros or whatever it is. Hiking and nature and destination can be Germany. And let's now submit to see what is actually happening. And here, let's see what are we getting. You must provide a model parameter. Okay. Here we need to put model and we're going to say 3.5 turbo like this. So let's go one more time submitting the same thing and let's see if it's working. So now it should work. Yes. Finish reason stop. Okay. So everything is good. We just need to get to our, where is it? choices message okay so we are going to choices message content ai knows everything and let's go one more time submit and now we should get our recommendation here it is so we have day one arrive in germany and check into your recommendation day two wake up early and we have our plan so this one is awesome now, next thing that we need to do, so this one we are getting only as text. Now, next thing that we need to do is to save this one into some database. So what am I going to use is Drizzle. I'm going now to the Drizzle Next.js documentation, searching that one in Google, and we are going to install Drizzle ORM. So like this, we are adding Drizzle ORM to our project and we are also adding Drizzle Kit as the dev dependency. And we are going to add Neon database. You don't have to use Neon. I'm using it because it's awesome and I can keep all of my databases on cloud with Neon. And I'm adding Neon and also adding .env because Drizzle is using .env inside of its files. And now we can add our Neon database connection string. So I'm going to Neon DB and there I already have my dashboard with a bunch of databases. I'm just going to create a new project. I'm going to call it AI Travel Planner and I'm going to create a new database. What's this? I'm going to skip this one for now. And here now I have my own connection string. So I'm copying that one 
and I need to paste it when we check here the documentation as database URL. So I'm going to the environment example and I'm adding here database URL and I'm going to copy now again inside of my env.local. So we can just leave it like this text, but for ID, we are going to use UUID from Drizzle and that one is going to be by default random like this and it's going to be a primary key and we don't need this done we are just going to say create that yes this one and we are adding timestamp from drizzle orm pg core and default is now so this one should be now ready for us to save our travel plan so now we are going again to our documentation and we can see here so first we need drizzle.config.ts and we are creating that one inside of our root so here new file drizzle.config.ts okay so this one now looks good and we need to apply the changes to our database. So we are doing the drizzle kit generate and no schema files found for path config sources db. Okay, because we are here inside the db and not sources db. So now it should work going one more time and there it is. Awesome. So let's see what's next. Then we created everything and we can push it like this. So now, okay, so either connection URL or host database are required for PostgreSQL database connection. A new error now, no config path provided. That's something in drizzle config. It should be .local and not .env. We are using .env.local. So let's try it out now again pushing and nice it's working so let's see now in our neon console in tables we should have a new table called plans here it is nice so we can start now actually saving the plans inside of our database so for that we are going to our to do here and it should be somewhere like add to do yeah this one so we are going to do the same thing like in the documentation. So we are going to the to do action.ts and here we have add to do. And it's as simple as this. So we are just inserting inside of our database the values and that's it. So we are going to do this exact same thing here inside of our ai.ts. So we are adding here our db from the drizzle and here we are adding our plans from our schema and we don't need id and for text we are going to put this data choices message content and now we are going to run it again so i'm going to oh yes we need to change also here the budget to be dollars like this so now i'm going to put again from 8th to 10th of october budget is 1000 selected activities is hiking and here we can put now spain and let's submit so let's see what is happening if everything is good so no errors nice let's see now our neon console i'm refreshing and now we should have something here yeah here it is so we have how should i how can i make this one bigger like this okay so here is a tentative blah 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 in spain the comatis and everything nice so this one is working we just need to tell now ai to style this one a little bit we can even say that it needs to be inside of some html and let's do that. So we are going to say inside of our prompt that, so here, that the result should be not a JSON object, but an HTML 
list of activities list of days with the activities for each day and please format the result as HTML like this okay that one should probably work and now so what's next here inside let's close everything inside of our travel planner form when we have our response and when everything is okay we should redirect to our plan page so here we're going to put one try catch like this and we are going to await this one and if that one is successful we are going to push to plan oh actually here we need to get our plan and that one is going to be returned from here so here we need to return actually our plan like this and we are going to return our plan id we don't need actually anything else we just need that id so we can push to this one slash plan and we are going to change the name to plan id like this and we don't have this router so we need to use use router from navigation from next.js this one and we are going to be redirected to plan slash plan id and i don't know why is this one not yet finding the name router i probably need to refresh it again and i i saw that cursor is like bugged bunch of times more than vs code and i'm still not sure if i'm going to use cursor but we'll see and now it should be good so we're returning plan id and we are redirecting to that id so let's try it out here i'm going once more from 15th to 19th of october my budget is four thousand dollars and i'm going to select art and history and i'm going to go to italy i'm submitting and now we should be redirected to plan slash nice this one is working so we don't have yet this page we should also put this page in our middleware and we should display here our travel plan so i'm creating quickly that new page and that one is going to be plan and inside we have our id like this and inside that id we have page.tsx like this so here we are going to export default function plan page and we have our parameters so what are we going to do is we are going to create a new feature we are going to call it plan.tsx and here i'm using the snippets and here we are going to display our plan so we need our interface plan props and there we have our id and we have our text string like this okay and we are passing it here inside of our component where we are going to display our id for the beginning like this so now here on our page we are going to put here instead of this div plan we are going to put our plan component like this and we are going to pass in our id and our text so now we need to get this text actually from our database so we need to create a new method and we can create that one inside of our server we are going to create a new file called plans.ts and there we are going to say export a sync function get plan like this and we are getting our plan from our database from our drizzle database so i'm importing our plans and it needs to be equal to this id that we are giving from our url so we are returning that plan like this and we are also going to put some try catch so 
it can catch errors in case we have any and it if we give some like different id it's going to display an error so now we are going to get that one inside of our page here so we are going to import get plan from server get plans and then we are going to call here for our plan and we are going to wait it so this function is a sync and this whole component is a server component and then we are going to send it to our plan and better way to do it is probably like this so we can have here the plan and we are going to create props here like that so we are going to say plan equals plan like this and let's put here also plan and here plan id and this plan is going to be id text string and created at that should be date so we th i think we need to have here date or undefined oh date or now okay so this one can be also now and now we don't have any type errors i think and let's see oh it, it this one is an array so here inside of our plans we need to return actually only one so how are we going to do that we are going to hack it like this so we are adding it like this into square brackets and we are returning only one so now we don't have any more type errors and we are putting our plan inside so here now we can see the id but if we put actually the text inside of our plan component we are going to see our text from database here it is so it is now html and it re returned it as a body and html and everything so we should just tell ai to be cautious with things like this so we can render it normally so now if we here inside of our component say dangerously set inner html and put that html to be this plan.txt this one is going to look totally different and it's now much better we just need to style it up a little bit so it looks better than this so here we are going to i don't know what is this let me see it's actually nothing okay as i thought so now we are going to put flex then height should be screen and something like this and let's see how does it look nice so it's not perfect and we need to tell ai to give much more than this so this is really nothing like special in terms of a travel plan it was much better when we saw the first example with germany because it said it the description was much bigger for each day maybe this is because these are this is for four days and not two days so we need to fix this one and we need to make it more beautiful so i'm going to remove this height screen and we can put some padding of 24 for example and here i'm going to put heading for your trip plan something like that let's see how does it look it's okay so now here i'm going to put flex column and gap of 10 to make it again better oh we have two flex columns okay removing that one and now let's say it's better i'm not going to spend much more time because this video is going to take 10 hours but i'm definitely going to work more on this project so in later videos you can see maybe some better design or something but for now i'm just going to keep it like this so we can continue and go to next screen which is which is going to be my plans so here we are just going to create one button that is going to be not back to home but we are going to say create a new plan and this button is going to be from our ui button and it's going to be 
not to the home screen, but to our, what's it called, travel planner. Like this. Nice. And we need to import our link from next slash link. And let's see how does it look. When we refresh now our screen, we have create a new plan. Excellent. And when we go there, we are going to our travel planner. And now we are going to create new my plan screen. So here I'm going to create my plans. And there we are creating page.tsx. So export default function my plans page. And inside of our header, in case that we are signed in, we are going to see a button and that button is going to go to my plans. So this link should be outside of the button. I hate this cursor already and I can't wait to go to VS Code again. So I'm adding link, I'm adding button and I'm also going to put variant to outline like this. So let's see how does it look. Refreshing my plans. Nice. We just need a little bit of gap between those two. So I'm putting flex gap to like this and nice. So now we can go to my plans. And here we are going to display all plans from our user. And when I said from our user, I already forgot in our schema, we need to put here user ID and that one is going to be just text user ID. It's not going to reference anything because we are getting that user ID actually from clerk. And we are going to push this one now. So this one and px drizzle kit push and it's probably going to ask to truncate the database no okay interesting so now here we should get user id inside of our table and here it is it's now here so i'm going to truncate this this data so we don't get any errors and now inside of our ai here here i'm just going to create user and i'm going to use current user and that one is from clerk and we are going to put user id to be id from our clerk user and this way we are going to connect each plan to different user and we know which plans we are getting out for our logged in user so let's just test this one out here i'm going to the travel planner and let's pick again from 9th to 12th of October and budget is going to be 2500 activities can be history and we're going to put Germany again so now we are submitting and let's see if everything is going well so it should be good let's now check here if we have our user ID inside so we have here our HTML and we have our user ID awesome so now we can get inside of this my plans page i don't know now where it is here it is here we can get all plans by our current user so i'm going to close everything i'm going to the plans server and here we are going to create get plans by user and we are sending our plans id so our plans this one needs to be renamed we are going to just return this one like this. And now we are getting all plans where our user ID equals the user ID we are sending, but we are not going to do it like this. We are going to delete this one and we are again going to call user from clerk. And if our user ID equals the user ID from clerk, in that case, we are going to return all of these to our My Plans page. So we are going to check if user is not logged in. So that's a good thing. 
we need to put it also here in our protected routes so it should be my plans also not only the travel planner so it should be like this my plans and then like this okay awesome and now we just need to get our plans from our page here so i'm going to get all the plans from our await get plans by user like this and we are going to display all of our plans here so i'm going to create again a new feature that one is going to be let's say plans list.tsx using react snippets again and this one needs to be renamed to plans list and this ai is something i hate okay and now we are going to put here props oh my god interface plans list props okay that one was good and that one is going to be bunch of plants so now we are sending all of our plants here and we are going to display them inside of our my plans page so we need to create this interface plans because we are using it also here so i'm going to create this interface somewhere i'm going to create here a new shared and then there i'm going to create types.ts and there i'm going to export our interface plan and this guy already knows everything and i'm going to use that one inside of our plan so here i'm using that plan from shared types and also why is it now complaining conflicts with local value okay and that's this one and we are just going to say this as plan type and here we are going to use it as plan type okay and here we are also going to import that plan type inside of our plans list component so now we should put here that new plans list and we are going to send all of our plans to our plans list so now here we can actually display it so now i'm going to use quickly shed cn card component this one and let's add that one quickly to display all of our plans adding that one i'm going to use all these imports inside of our plans list so i'm doing it here and then i'm just going to copy paste this whole snippet and we are going to use that one for our plans so i'm putting it here this return should be here and i'm closing the bracket here so now this one should be good and we can go and map through our plans for each plan we are going to create a different card and key is going to be our plan id our title is going to be not our text it's going to be our let's say created that like this here we don't have enough information for our plans so we need to put new things inside of our table so here i'm going to add the budget that one is going to be an integer and start date and end date so this one is integer from pg core and date also from pg core like this nice and now inside of our ai here we are going to add so we need budget start date end date and this one is already so this one needs to be an iso string like this start date yeah like this awesome so now we can put the budget and start date inside of our my plans plans list here so i'm going to put 
in the description I can put here for example budget and then we can say plan budget let's just update our type nice and so here we have our budget and in our content we can say for example start date is that one and end date is this one and we can just remove this footer so let's now truncate our data again so we need to run our where is it the drizzle kit push this one so we are adding new columns to our table and yes we are going to truncate it and let's try creating now new oh this one doesn't exist let's create new travel plans so i'm going from 10th to 13th of october my budget is five thousand dollars i'm going to hike somewhere and that country is going to be italy so now i'm submitting and we should add here some kind of loading and okay it's working so hiking in italy hiking in italy it's it's looking great so now if we go to our plans we are getting some problems, so it shouldn't be to local date, date string. Uh, this one is already a string, so I'm going to remove this one. And let's see what's happening. So it's date or null. It's basically not date. In our case, this one is... Let's see what it is, actually. So let's see what is this type of data actually inside of our schema. So here it's date and I'm not sure what is Postgres returning, but let's try here to use format from date FNS. So I'm going to use this one date FNS. Here it is. And what's happening here. So date or now and in case it's null, so we need to check here if plan created that exists. In that case, we are showing this one and we are going to do the same thing here and here. So let's see now what is happening. I'm refreshing the screen and there it is. So this is our first card and it's working nicely. So it's October the 4th and i don't know what is october the 4th here so that one is when plan created that oh, okay so that's when when it's created so the plan was created uh plan created on this date and our budget is five thousand dollars and that one should be now good okay so we just need to add some padding on our page here we have some errors because these plans are yes so start date and end date are actually coming as strings so we are going to change our type plan here to have instead of date or null it should be string like this and then in plans list we don't need to actually check this one if it's good or not it's always coming as a string so that one is good oh this one we need to check this is created that okay and now on our page we don't have any problems and here we are going to put some padding so it looks better container i mix up let's try it like this to see how does it look refreshing the screen and we are going to put much more. Let's put it like this. I go the classic way, flex column, item, justify center, P24. And let's see it now. Nice. So now if we have three cards, they're going to be one next to each other. And this one now looks already much better. And here we are going to put the big link so like this and that one is going to go to my plans plan id so we need to put our key on our link not on our card 
and oh we have it already by AI okay and we need to import this link from next slash link and we are going to put on our card here class name the cursor pointer we don't need the hover and we are going to say hover like this background primary and let's try 10 and transition then we can put is in duration 3000 and translate translate like this just one let's see how does it look so that's now and we have here gaps two gaps okay let's see how does it look so we have simple animation but it's not going up let's see why this translate should actually work on hover and that one should be minus let's say five so let's try it out now when we go our mouse over yes it's moving it's just five is maybe too much let's put two and nice this one is working fine so when we click we're going to our plan except this one is not working it shouldn't be my plans it should be plan sabotage from this cursor ai from cursed ai and let's try one more time so i'm going to this plan and we are going to that plan to check how does it look and let's try creating a new plan so now we have here 15th of october to 19th of october our budget is four thousand dollars activities food and culture and we are going to italy again and let's see how does it look and i hope we are going to get yeah now it's looking a little bit better so we have our italy trip it's on tuesday october 15 2024 enjoying traditional italian dinner at the local trattoria visit the Colosseum in Rome, okay, explore Vatican City, so he thinks that we are in Rome, and and here he thinks we are in Florence, and here Venice, we, we should have some teleports for this trip plan, but this can all be fixed, of course, and now let's check my plans, so now we have here two plans, one is for the October the 4th, oh no, this one is actually for the October the 9th, and this one for the 14th and yeah we should actually here probably save our countries also and city and we can extract all the data basically from ai to save to our database to show additional data to the users but this one is now working i think really nice so we can get back here and maybe here we could add another card for add new for adding the new uh, plan so here we are just going to put the same design like here and in card content we are going to put a big plus from lucid react like this and our class name is going to be size let's say 28 to see how it is that going to look so now i'm refreshing and here it is we just don't need maybe this entire header or we can put this one inside the header and remove this title and remove this content so let's see how does it look now nice we're just going to put that width is only the max like this and nice so now we have a create new button and that one should go to our travel planner here and again sabotage from this cursor and there it is so now we can add a new plan on this button and no <laughs> why is it going to plan create i saved it and cursor is really killing me 
and there it is so now we basically have the whole circle for our application and everything works smoothly i hope you enjoyed this video warriors for more content like this join the horde subscribe to this channel and you also have a discord channel and you have the invitation in the description below see you